Yes, you read that right. Half a million dollar medical bill for a rattlesnake bite. You're probably going to know why it's so expensive and how I got bit in the first place. And I felt like I almost died during this. There were crazy things. The doctors didn't know what to do half the time. Um, I had to like do some weird stuff myself just to treat myself. It was a nightmare all the way through. I'll, I'll walk you guys through it. Long story short, I was photographing Southern Pacific rattlesnakes, which is known for having a pretty bad bite uh, as far as rattlesnakes go. It's probably not a good one, but uh, anyway, uh, I was oh, so stupid. There, there, I was photographing it, and there's this one blade of grass in my uh, in my way, and so I went to go grab it. I figured I could get it, but I'd already spooked a different rattlesnake into this big rock where I was photographing. It was a din site. It was October. There's rattlesnakes all over this area. I had spooked one. It went under the rock. I thought it was gone, but it's just tucked up underneath. And as soon as I grabbed that grass, I couldn't see it, but it saw me and it nailed me so fast. Stupid, stupid, stupid. That's my first thought because I knew better. I worked with so many venomous snakes. You don't, you don't do that. It's, it's, it's irresponsible and dumb, but I did and I paid for it. Uh, I saw two fangs. I mean, it was a flash. Bam! That fast. Two fangs penetrated. One in this finger and then one in my ring finger. Instantly felt some pain. I was like, oh no. Like... I screwed up so bad, and all this thought was while I was in the air, because I must have jumped five feet in the air, landed next to a huge rattlesnake, and I was like, whoa, buddy, you need to calm down. So I took a few feet away to be safe, called 911. I've got zero cell service after a rattlesnake bite. So I took a deep breath. I said a prayer. Then I told myself, hey, man, you've been through bad stuff before. It's going to be a bad day today, but at some point this day is going to be over. Um... So my plan was to walk about two or 300 yards to my car, drive 20-ish minutes to the highway, get cell service, and call 911. But as soon as I started walking, I went down this ravine, and I heard this loud noise like, like an engine. And I was like, what is that? And right above the ridge, I can, I can only see the top of it. I saw the top of a red truck, and I knew that was a fire truck. And it was like God just sent this fire truck as soon as I got bitten. It was the most crazy thing ever but there's a problem because it was going to drive by me while I was down in this tall grass they would they're, they're never going to see me so my first instinct is to run but you don't want to run after you get bitten by a rattlesnake you're going to you know cause the venom to spread more quickly it's just not a good thing to do um but sometimes you got to make a decision I made the decision you got to catch that fire truck that's your best chance so I hauled as fast as I could Got out there right in front of the truck, like three or four seconds before I would have missed it. And I hopped up on the side. I'm like, guys, I just got bitten by a rattlesnake. And they didn't believe me. And so I held up my hand, and these two fingers were already swollen, like starting to swell up. You can see the fang marks. He's like, dude, get in the truck. I sat there, and then the, then the weird stuff, really weird stuff started happening. And I, I don't know how much of this, like, I'm like lucid about and how much is just weird high on snake venom memories but I sit down in there and then all of a sudden I know my pupils just dilated like like you're, like you're on like methamphetamine or something because everything around was was bright it was like like when you see people high like it was freaky um so I was like okay hey man like this thing's not just local it's systemic it's it's in my whole body in that 15 minute, 20 minute drive to the highway in this fire truck, I lost my ability to speak. I lost my ability to make facial expressions after that. So I couldn't even like make expressions to answer the questions he had. I felt my legs go completely paralyzed and I, I reached over and I strapped myself in. He's like, yeah, I probably should have told you to do that. But the reason I strapped myself in is because I couldn't really hold myself up in the seat anymore with my legs. I was just kind of dangling and I wanted to to text uh, like my, my friends at the time. So I would text, I would look at my message, it'd be complete gibberish. I could think clearly, I knew exactly what I wanted to say, but somewhere between my brain and my thumbs, like it was lost and I would just have gibberish. And I did that over and over and over. I never got a, a text message that made any sense out. Then I felt myself going and you, and, and you hear stories about people like, Feel like their life force is leaving like like they can you can just feel it going and, and i felt it and that's when i got scared because i knew like the chance of me die. I, w I didn't think i was going to die from this 
at no point before this did I think I was going to die. I'm like, it's going to suck. I could add permanent damage. That's when I realized I had a, a worse than normal bite. I could just feel myself going. I was going into shock is what was happening. They get me out of the fire truck. Um, I'm not feeling any pain at this point because I'm just so out of it. I've got mucus down to here. I remember coughing because I felt like it was like mucus but dry. And I couldn't breathe well. And I was coughing trying to clear it. And the fireman asked me, like, hey, man, please watch your mucus. And I was, like, embarrassed. Like, what? Sorry, sorry. I can barely talk because my mouth is paralyzed. Uh, sorry about the mucus, man, if you're watching. Um, then I hear him go say, like, he's going, he's going. I'm, like, I'm looking, I'm looking around, like, who's going where? And I realized it was me. I was going, I was, I was losing consciousness. And I fell, and I slammed my head into the fire truck. And then I felt the guys grab me. And there's something about hitting my head that really woke me up like I needed it and I was a lot more aware at that point after hitting my head shockingly uh, probably probably big adrenaline boost or something and then but uh, then the, the paramedics arrived and they came up and I'm like trying to tell the guy I'm going into shock like I, I can feel it and he's like no no you're not going into shock puts me on the uh, the bed or the gurney whatever it's called to put you in, into the uh, ambulance and he lifts my legs which is how you treat shock and immediately I felt so much better like I could feel like the blood go back in my head it was it was one of the best feelings of my life and I was trying to tell the guy you're a liar I was going into shock but I still couldn't speak properly they put me in the ambulance put oxygen on me and I think the oxygen plus my feet up stabilized me enough for, for me to realize holy crap this this hurts it was it was extremely painful I didn't feel any pain before that so at this point I'm like okay now this is really gonna suck for a while and uh so the, uh, the, the EMT guy or paramedic sees that I have a swollen hand. What do you do with that? Well, you put ice on it. What he doesn't know is you don't put ice on snake bites. They used to actually pack your hands in ice uh, to treat it, and it caused a lot of problems. It can actually cause your hands, it actually caused more damage. So I kept trying to tell him no ice. Uh, he didn't understand me because I couldn't speak. But I kept taking it off. He would put the ice back on. I'm getting, I'm getting frustrated. I'm not trying to say the word contraindicated, which means basically don't do it. I was trying to sound smart, but he can't understand me. Three or four times he puts the ice back on. I'm like, dude, what is this guy doing? I, I miss being able to speak. And so what I did is I pulled the blanket up over me like I was cold. And then underneath the blanket, I slid the ice off my hand. Um, then uh, I started having these weird muscular... It looks like you have snakes under your skin. It's called fasciculations. It looks like snakes are crawling around under your skin. That's the best way I, could, I can describe it. I'm guessing that's Probably your sodium potassium pumps going crazy from the uh, maybe the hyaluronidase or, or some other component of the venom. I'd love for a venom expert to get on there and talk, uh, get on the comments or something and talk about that. Uh, but I knew what it was. I was familiar with it from from uh, I worked on a few TV shows where we dealt with bad snake bites. Uh, so it didn't really freak me out. They wheel me to the ER. I'm like, I need Crofab. That, that is that is what they use. This antivenom they use to treat uh, rattlesnake bites inside the U.S. Um, and the late, the, the nurse in the ER, she's like, look around you. And I can see everyone around and there's six people rolling Crofab, which I, I guess is probably powdered the way they store it. So they need to reconstitute it with, with water. Um, so they're all rolling and getting ready for me. And I felt so relieved. And she's like, do you want morphine? And I'm in pain. And I'm like, no, because morphine can, can suppress your breathing. And she's like, Honey, right now you are hyperventilating, <laughs> so I think it'll do you good. I'm like, all right, bring on the drugs. She gave it to me. Five minutes later, she's like, you good? I'm like, I don't feel any relief. There, there was nothing. There's no change in, in the amount of pain. The morphine did nothing. Uh, so I'm like, I'm like, uh, she's like, I'll give you something. I think they gave me Dilaudid or something else. And then, I, then I was good to go. Let me tell you, it was a party at that point. Uh, <laughs> had me feeling pretty good. Then I don't remember anything for 30 hours I actually when I was in the ER my friend showed up and, and they tried they said they tried to take my temperature she's like open your mouth to take your temperature and I went <laughs> things were not right after that um so I woke up 30 hours later in my hospital room the nurse was in there and she's like oh you're awake and I'm like yeah how am I doing uh uh you know have I been asleep she's like yeah you've been asleep but you've been tossing and turning for about 30 hours I'm like, oh I'm like how's my blood work looking and she's like well it's honestly not very good you're, you're still going, kind of getting worse. Look, like, okay, well, how many more vials of antivenin have, have I had? And she's like, well, you've had none. You just, they gave it to you in the ER. 
I'm like, oh my gosh. So, you know, I'm not a doctor, but I know a little bit about snake bite just because, you know, I work with snakes. And after that initial dose you get in the ER, if that doesn't take care of it, you need another dose. And, and they'll even give you maintenance doses every six hours uh, to, to uh, make sure you have a high enough level of antibodies going into you to neutralize the venom. And I'm like, I need to speak to the doctor right away. Doctor comes in, and I'm like, I need more antivin if my blood work is this bad. And she's like, no, you already got the maximum amount. I'm like, uh, listen, I'm not a doctor, uh, but I do know about snake bite. And, you know, we need we need more antivin. Like, I think it has like a six-hour half-life. You need to administer this every six hours, roughly, um, you know, to keep me going because I'm still, I'm still going downhill. She's like, no, that's not true, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, listen, I'm not a doctor. I don't I don't know everything, but do me a favor. For someone that's worked with snakes, call Poison Control and just ask them the protocol. Just ask them. And she would not do it. I spent about 20 minutes in there with this lady. Um, finally, she's like, you know what? Fine, I'll call Poison Control. I don't know. Half hour later, this nurse comes running in. She's like, you're getting more antivin and you're getting it now. They give me six vials. Throughout the course of this, I ended up getting 30 vials of antivin, and they wanted to give me more, but the, I guess the West Coast ran out of it. There's a shortage at the time, is what they told me. They got some from the East Coast eventually. At 30 vials, I finally started doing better at about day five. Um, but they said I needed more. They just, it was, it was close enough basically for them to stop giving me antivin. It was pretty crazy. And, and there was a lot of concern along the way uh, that the antivenin was not working properly. And this is the case a lot with Southern Pacific rattlesnake bites, the rattlesnake around Los Angeles. So anybody that watches this at Hikes Running Canyon and stuff, I know there's millions of people that do it probably every year. Um, you know, that's the snake there, and the antivenin is not particularly effective. I'm guessing because they don't use that snake in the production that you get some crossover effect from the other snakes they use, but it's not perfect. Uh, anyone has more information on that, I'd love to hear about it. Um, but she came in one day, and my friend was there, Mike, and he's a snake expert. And she's like, this antivin is not working. We think that you have misidentified the snake, or it could have been an exotic snake. And I'm like, no. It's the only rattlesnake around Los, uh, this part of Los Angeles, Crotalus heleri, the Southern Pacific rattlesnake. And she got mad and left, and, and my buddy Mike is like, you should have just said gray, buddy. And I'm like, you're probably right. Um... Then I started having my most concerning symptom, at least to me. My blood, my blood work is terrible. I think uh, your platelet count, which you know, is one of your clotting factors, is normally 150 to 400. Mine was down to 19. And if you slip down in the single digits, you're starting to bleed out all of your orifices, all, all of them. And so I was, I was pretty freaked out by that. But I noticed around uh, day three or four, how am I going to put this family friendly? You got the twig and you got the berries, right? So my twig was looking more like the berries. It was just round and full of fluid and like dead blood. It was disgusting. And so I called the doctor in. I'm like, sorry to show you this. She's like, I'm a doctor. I don't care. And then I showed her and she's like, okay, that's weird. I'm like, yeah, that, that's, that's weird. So she looks at it for a minute. And she's like, I'm not sure what's going on. And then she starts to look at my arm. <laughs> I'm like, doctor? Forget my arm, save my... And she like laughed at my joke. And I'm like, but I'm not joking. I'm not joking at all. That was pretty scary. And uh, she left and they didn't know what to do. So I called the nurse. I'm like, I need a pair of scissors. Not what you're thinking. <laughs> um, I cut my waistband. And what I remember is that, that lymph travels just under the skin. And it's probably a lot of lymph fluid that's, that's causing this buildup, was my best guess. So I cut my waistband. Uh, which is super tight because my whole body was swollen. Um, and within a few hours, it returned to normal. So thankfully, I was able to fix that. And I heard the nurses later saying, well, at least he knew what to do. Good thing. I was like, oh, my gosh. And it's not the not the hospital's fault. It's, I would actually love to go back to that hospital. I don't ever want to go back to the hospital. But if I, if I had to go to the hospital, I'd go back to this one because otherwise it's really good. Um, but they, they don't know a lot about snake bite. It's not a common thing for them. Um, but you know, it was crazy. I had bruising that, that spread down my body and you guys see that in the pictures. Um, it's a lot of swelling, a lot of pain for days, but about day five, it turned around. 
But anyway, got out of the hospital, went home, back to life. I get the medical bill. All total between the hospital bill and the doctor's bill, roughly, it's been 10 years, but $580,000. This bill's confusing. It looks like it's mostly uh, pain management and antivenom. That was the big prices. But look right here. Um, I don't know why those are subtracted, but um, I don't have the full bill. But four of them cost $54,730. Divide that by four, it's $13,682. So I had 30 times $13,682, which comes to $410,475. So the bulk of what I was uh, billed for was antivenin. This was in 2011. I lost my health insurance after the 2008 crash around 2009. So I have no health insurance. So I don't know what I'm going to do. But the hospital had a charity. And they said, I can apply uh, for this charity. And I thought, there's no way they're going to forgive that much money. And they forgave my entire hospital bill. Half a million dollars. They, the charity took care of it. And it was a charity associated with uh, uh, Providence Holy Cross Medical Center. I don't remember the name of the charity. I, me I remembered it for a long time. I've forgotten now, but I'll, I'll never forget you guys. Uh, the, I still owed around 80000 to like the doctors that came and saw me. They were a separate thing. But still, that, that was a huge deal. And I've got this bill. This is the only thing I can find left. And it's not the full bill. This one's for $68,000. <sighs> but, it, but it was crazy. So that's my snake bite experience. So if I have any advice to anyone, if you're going to work with venomous snakes, try to get some health insurance. And more importantly, probably, uh, not to go preachy, but use hooks or gloves, something. You, know, you don't have to try to be the crocodile hunter on this. But anyway, thanks for... Thanks for listening to my story, and um, what I want to hear, I know some of you listening have had more expensive rattlesnake bites than that, or even less expensive. I want to hear um, you know, how much it costs and why, and please put it down in the comments, and maybe we can do another video someday with your snake bite. Anyway, stay safe out there, guys, and don't get bit.